Crunchy Boy. Munchy Boys! End of the World Season Finale <laughs> Edition, episode... Three six yeah episode thirty six finale and we're gonna go a little crazy on the finale I mean the season finale maybe the series finale who knows oh my god we're gonna go completely off the rails and by that he does mean something specific but he just can't tell you yet and and you know what I'm doing I'm doing that thing where you know I act like it's a secret but as we say they always know where we went You've already seen the pictures you've already read the descriptions but hey we're going to play along or you're going to play <laughs> along we're all playing along Yeah anyway so lately I would say what's up but I've been seeing all these projects you've been doing Aaron what what are these electronics you've been posting I've been winding vector monitor yokes and now here's my Two power supplies for my vector monitor that I'm going to wire up and uh, Whoa. basically making an electromagnet that will allow me to play vector games such as Asteroids and Tempest and Space Duel, Major Havoc, and many more. And so you're making a specific monitor or? Yeah, I've, you can't see it right now, but behind me I've got that vector yoke I was winding on a uh, old uh, TV tube, so it'll... Uh, Convert the raster TV into a vector monitor. So, oh, yeah, that's freaking insane. Well, that's cool. Is that hard? Have you ever done that before? I have never done it before. And um, I was waiting for an electrical harness to kind of put everything, all the, the, the wiring together. And that hasn't arrived yet. So I've been basically working on it this morning to replace uh, this harness that I have here Ooh. with a full thing to wire the plus 24 volts and negative 24 volts to make it a 48 volt rail. And then um, there's my neck board that goes on the monitor and there's the deflection board that creates the actual vectors. And there's the uh, high voltage board that uh, has the little high voltage anode cap that goes to the TV. That's the, the whole do not open, do not touch, you know, part. You don't want to get shocked. No, luckily I've got a nice... Uh, a nice coil, a, a, a nice wand that uh, zaps out the energy before that. Yeah. And nobody at home should ever touch the inside of a TV. Only Aaron knows what. There's something that can shock you. No user serviceable parts inside. But I'm no user. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. How about you, Tony? You've been working on some stuff, right? Okay, I've been working on some painting projects at the house and the kitchen. It's turning it to be a complete pain in the ass. Uh-oh. Because they, uh, so there's some cabinetry that's brand new that was raw wood. There was some wall stuff that was wood. So I had to do the primer. And then today I sanded the primer. And let me, let me just say I got in over my head. Like literally? Like I, I basically, I got completely dusty. Luckily I was wearing at least a surgical mask for the dust. But uh, I probably should have worn N95. But uh, yeah, so I was doing all this dusty ass work. It was all hard. So I've been doing that work. I've been doing some yard work. I've been riding the electric moped. Yesterday, I went riding with the electric and the gas mopeds with my sister, Hannah. Riding the electric moped. Sounds like some sort of a euphemism or some kind of an expression, you know. Like, oh, Tony, he's just out riding the electric moped. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I love how I feel the need to even say electric. It's like, I don't need to say the source. Like, it could be the gas ones. It could be the electric. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Last yeah. week, I drove my gas van down to <laughs> Lincoln to, to, to pick up a TV set for uh, t for arcade monitor use, actually. Oh, my gosh. All the way to Lincoln just for a TV. Yeah, it's, it was kind of ridiculous. But on the other hand, it was like a perfect drop in for a Wells Gardner K7000 chassis. So, like, whoa, my so it was more kind of a rare... 1943 monitors downstairs. I could just basically, you know, if the tube shorts or goes bad or gets bad burn i can basically nice rewire so the, the yoke perfect and drop size. the new one in yeah That's perfect. so that was handy speaking of perfect size look at this whiskey are you drinking again tony i mean should i be having a whiskey at three o'clock on a sunday no but yeah you know there's uh there's a name for people who do that <laughs> is it alcoholic alcoholic so here's the thing 
I literally started have started liking having like a little drinky whenever we record just because it's kind of fun. Like, oh, yeah, it's always fun hearing you slosh around your drink in the background. <laughs> I know exactly. But yeah, what else has been up? Uh, trying to think anything else. Have we been munching? Oh, we grilled lovely, like high quality steaks. Hi. Did I send you that picture? You sent of my me a picture steaks? and I was like, Tony. If you're going to send me a picture of your high-quality steaks, there better be better a third high-quality steak for me <laughs> to come over and join. <laughs> That's not cool to be yeah, showing I mean, me, like, meat that I can't eat. It's like, you know, <laughs> how rude. It's like a strip It's like a strip club where they're like, oh. Yeah, it's like you can, like, and you're like, you oh, can look, but uh, can't you touch. can't taste, yeah. you know. <laughs> taste, not touch. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but so the steak story is like we rarely ever make steak. Did I just say steak story? The steak story. Anyway, yeah. we rarely ever make steaks, wait, but wait. we had like a... You, you, you rarely have a steak beef meat. Go on. <laughs> but uh, we had a gift card from Christmas for Fairway Foods. Fairway Foods? And so we... Yeah, so we went there and I got two bone-in ribeye steaks, mm, like big old rice steaks. And... uh bone in don't say bone in lady are you nuts anyway uh they were literally listen to this 20 what? like something like 20 the equivalent of 20 dollars each each like the total was like 41 something just for the two steaks tony are you nuts i know that's what i was saying so here is the silver lining by the time we grilled and we finished our dinner i bought so i spent the the 50 dollars gift certificate perfectly i got the two steaks i got these little small I think they're called maybe fingerling potatoes or something, but they're little, little tiny small. Balls. You're all about the redundancy. And I cut today. them in half, cooked them in olive oil, and then also I got we had uh, asparagus, which you would say I can't believe you just buy asparagus. I mean, you have a spare, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Micah was Micah was laughing about how he, uh, when he listened to the episode, he's like, I love when Aaron Aaron said. Tony, you just buy cabbage. Like I can't right. believe you just it's buy. Like, oh, luckily I got this. I've got this nice cabbage line here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll kind of stew it up and make something out of it. You know. Speaking of that, I threw the re the rest of that same cabbage on the grill last night. Grilled cabbage, Tony? Are you nuts? It was great, but uh, but yeah. So I was gonna say the silver lining of the expensive steaks is that we were only like we literally only ate half our steak each because it was that big. Yikes! And so we were able to save it for the next day. Hey, leftover steak meat beef. And I will say it was good. I would hope so. Like the the second day. Yeah. The only time it's permissible to pay forty bucks for two steaks. Is, is it, that a restaurant? Is it a steakhouse? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's what I was telling Whitney. I was like, "Can you believe? Literally, our dinner cooked at home was fifty dollars." Like I was like, imagine how expensive it would be out of place. How many like, how many ounces are we talking here for the steak though? Oh shit, I don't even know. I mean, like I literally don't know what it would have been considered. Because like, like, did you uh, look up the prices? Like if, they were huge. If you go to like, like Outback Steakhouse and get like a sixteen ounce like steak, you know you're paying probably what twenty dollars, twenty three dollars maybe. I I I want to say it's the the price said it was twelve ninety nine a pound. If I'm if my memory serves me correctly, so you got so some serious meat poundage going on there. Yeah, we you're had some serious the meat pounds. Yeah, we had some serious ounce ounces. You're, you're more steak than man now, Tony. Mm hmm. No, it's not in my system anymore. <laughs> Did you find any vampires and get and stake them? No. Oh. Well, I didn't, uh, and I didn't have any garlic. So. Oh, you yeah. Well, you got to put a little anyway. garlic powder next time you're making asparagus or. Grilling cabbage. Oh my gosh! You know what I just realized? Okay, what did you just realize? Tony? Well, I didn't just realize it. I just remembered on your recommendation uh? because you watched it too. We watched Coming to, to America. America. Yes, and by two I mean the number two, part two, the newest movie, a numero two. <laughs> and uh, and so I so I was like, oh, maybe we should watch the first one. We didn't really have time to do that. And then watch the second one anyway. So we just, uh, so I had a good idea, a semi good idea. I was like, okay, let's just watch the trailer of the first one. Cause it's right. Like it was right on Amazon as well. So I looked it up, pulled it up in like one second. We watched the trailer and honestly, that was a good decision. So anybody that hasn't watched coming to America, just go at least watch the trailer from the first one. If you don't remember everything, like, Although, or if you haven't seen it, I will say this. 
as somebody who enjoys the original, and I mean, I've probably only really seen it once, and I and I was honestly like 20 years ago. I mean, it's not something that I would routinely watch, you know? I mean, it's enough to where it's like, oh, yeah, that's a good movie, but I don't have to see it again. I don't know the last time I saw it, and I did not watch the trailer or rewatch it. And they basically recap everything from the original yeah. in one way or another, so you don't really need to. Obviously, yeah. if you remember the characters, you know, there, there's a lot of great characters in the original. Yeah. If you remember them and you love their scenes, then, oh my gosh, there's so much nostalgia candy for you. Yeah, and I was... I was actually analyzing that even if you haven't seen the first, you can still obviously enjoy the second. Oh one. yeah, yeah. And it's, but obviously, it's not ideal. It would be it would be ideal to watch it freshly, part one, and then maybe you know watch the second one a couple of days later. But it's you don't have to. And like I said, just from watching the trailer from the first one, there was enough references to all the throwbacks that they did on part two. Yeah, that it was like plenty to be refreshed because I haven't seen it either in like forever since I was a little kid. And to me, it was like probably so. better like not having like if I watch it again, it's like all right, oh there's that character from the original. It's like this way, it's yeah. like oh that guy, I remember that guy or those guys, yeah. and it's like like it was almost more enjoyable. Yeah, because like it's like it was oh you're you like a... remembering this thing that happened like you know many 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 moons ago, and yeah, but it was I I really enjoyed it. I mean, it, it felt. A good energy, and you forget, you know, you yeah. you legitimately forget how good of an actor Eddie Murphy really is. Yeah, you know, you uh -huh. kind of think of Mike like in the '90s. It was like the oh, the Nutty Professor, and oh, it's you know, there's you know, whatever, you know, you like you know when like Dolomite is my name and and coming to America, it's like oh yeah, this this guy actually really is a good actor. Yeah, I did notice that. So the director is different. Originally, it was John Landis, who obviously is a famous old. Old time director. American Werewolf in London. Yeah. But it was one of those things where I was like, oh, yeah, the, it's a different director this time. I don't know how much that matters as far as the Coming to America franchise or not. Yeah. But it's probably more of an Eddie thing. Like, oh, I'm just here to serve Eddie. Probably. So, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. you can definitely tell that, like, you know, this isn't something where they have to, like, drag, like, you know, Eddie out of, you know, to, to enforce him to do it. I mean, he's very clearly a big part of everything about this and yeah in every scene and sometimes in every scene like three times <laughs> yeah and i you know what's crazy is like i actually was reminded how awesome arsenio is because mm. like i've never like everything arsenio in my life has been when i was a kid yeah like, oh yeah absolutely you know, the show and just everything so i was like actually he's freaking awesome like he he's so entertaining and like they they play so many different characters like and, he, and even like uh, like Wesley Snipes it's great seeing him again mhm mm cuz you know like yeah exactly i was thinking that too i was like holy shit i i've i've heard rumor that they're going to bring blade back into the marvel cinematic universe wow but with a different blade it's like well wait a minute you're like Wesley could still yeah, do it. Yeah, he Did still can do him? it. He still got the moves. He still looks young. Yeah. You know, i mean if he's he's the daywalker, you know, let let him do it. Oh my gosh! I've, I'm so I pulled up the IMDb. Oh my god! A shining, absolute shining star of coming to America was Leslie Jones. Like I thought she was so freaking funny. Um, I, I'm a little, I'm a little conflicted on that. I mean, oh, you don't like Leslie? No, it's not that I don't. It's not that I don't like her. I, and in fact, there were some genuine scenes where when I was watching Coming to America, Coming to America, I was like, okay, you know, she might actually have some real acting chops. Yeah. The, the whole like, ow, ah, I'm a loud annoying woman. Ow, dang. It's like, <laughs> no, no, Leslie Jones. I mean, I get that. You need that person for to a degree in this particular movie, but like tone that down. <laughs> but I will say this, um, and this is a funny thing to say, you know, but like watching Coming to America kind of reminds me of like, you know, being, you know, raised as a, a white kid from Iowa and then like meeting your, uh, Basically, be, suddenly be, by an age like 35, being the firstborn male child in, in, a, in a black family, it it's kind of reminds me mm -hmm. of uh, my own uh, experience a little bit. Yeah. You know, not so much. So it made you relate to it more. Not, not so yeah. much with the uh, lavish uh, palatial estates and the, the Leslie <laughs> yeah. Jones. Yeah. But I was actually thinking, it's yeah. like, you know, you know, if I, when I, as I'm trying to develop, you know, part of like the story for film or possibly television. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. I can see Leslie Jones playing a certain character in 
that uh, bio family life, you know, but only if she can actually yeah. act. Like, I, I feel like she probably has the chops to not be like, ow, I'm Leslie Jones. Hey! You know, it's like, <laughs> Well, I thought she seemed really natural, though. That's yeah, that's part I, of the reason I thought it was awesome, even though like certain parts were annoying with her. Yeah, but that's what I, I said. That it's, she, like, it's, it's a conflicted yeah. thing. It's not like, oh, I hate her. What's she doing there? It's like, it's like I feel like there's she's got some real potential to, to for a subtle performance and and with heart and not just like, ow, yeah. you know. It's like ah, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That, but it was uh, one of the the thing I thought that was cool about her, even though like, yeah, obviously she's supposed to be the annoying mom of the the main character was that uh, she just never seemed it never seemed forced. Like she has these certain nuances with like what she does. And I'm sure that part of that is SNL and part of it is almost probably just playing her own personality yeah. a little bit. But uh, uh, yeah, it just came off as so like natural and not like. You know, she was never, it never seemed like she was self aware, if that makes sense. You know, again, uh, with the SNL thing, it was also, to me, it was like, and it's funny, I had this conversation the other day with somebody like that, but uh, like Tracy Morgan, you know, I mean, I've got nothing wrong with Tracy Morgan, you know, but like, yeah, Tracy Morgan is basically Tracy Morgan. You throw him on screen and it's like, yeah, I'm just Tracy Morgan. It's like, yeah, yep, uh huh. You know? Yeah. Okay. I I totally agree with you there. Cause like I love Leslie Jones, so part of me is like, no, I love her. But with Tracy Morgan, I completely can agree with that. Like, I get that he would be a go-to for that character, but also it was almost cliche. Like, uh, yeah, no, and he was. I feel like the choice could have been a little bit more complex than picking Tracy Morgan to play that part. You know, I mean, I, I mean, know, it'd be good like, if he was just the uncle only in like the the queen scene, and that was it, like that. But bringing him back and like uh-huh. how he's part more of a part of the movie, and now you there's a yeah. the whole thing with like it's like, uh, do we need that? Yeah. Where I don't know, but you're right. He does kind of always just play himself. Like he yeah. he is pretty limited. Like and, but also like I get that. Like I get like okay, we want him to play himself because it's like well, what else are you gonna like have him do? I don't know. And also as somebody who just recently watched like Trading Places a few months ago, the uh, Duke and Duke reference at the beginning opening scene was hilarious. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that one. I haven't seen that. Oh man. But many listeners might know what you're talking about, and they'll be like, hell yeah. They will be like, hell yeah. But yeah, so we're just analyzing it. I mean, obviously, it's not made to like super analyze. It's supposed to be entertaining, and it yeah, is. Yeah, and it's... And it's it, was, it was completely fun. It's all, The cinematography was cool for oh, what it yeah, is. Oh, yeah, no, it's actually, the cinematography yeah. and, like the, and the movie, you know, because like, we grew up in like the 90s where like, you know, you had like black themed movies like coming to America that were directed by white people and had a very yeah. white take on, Oh, this is African. So let's make it all crazy and ornamental like that. I feel like this is more Eddie Murphy's uh-huh. like own personal take on that and not like say John yeah. Landis's take on that. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what's crazy. Speaking of that, like the, like the, the African side, like I thought that like the way that they did that and like, with the different dance stuff and all that, it was actually like super cool. Like the way you like, you could tell they like went into such detail oh, yeah. with like all those different sequences and everything they did. It was like awesome. So and also like Wes- yeah, Wesley Snipes' character is like you know funny because like they kind of almost played it like you would typically see that character in a movie, but then they also made him, you know way more hilarious and funny in a, in a, in a yeah. in, you know, and in, in more character, you know, it wasn't just like yep. the crazy more warlord that's going to come in and, and, you know, but he was, but he was also, you know, like the, you know, the inspiration for Mufasa and has his, uh, his dance number coming <laughs> in. And yeah, and that was, that reminds me of like another thing I liked, which was like, there were those kind of like personality conflicts, but then they weren't just the one sided or one dimensional character. Like, so if you notice, they were annoyed by the the Queen's family at first. But then I liked that they got along. Like, every one of them yeah. got along later yeah. in the movie. And I love that. Like, it was like a positive take on, like, because a lot of movies just do it like, we don't like them. And then it's just negative. Right. And, like, and for a movie, obviously, you need, like, character conflicts and stuff. But, like, yeah. it could definitely be a little heavy handed in some cases where it's like, oh, I get it. These guys don't like each other. And, like, you know, they. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, exactly. it it didn't stay too hard. I think. And speaking of Mufasa, oh my gosh, how about that uh, James Earl Jones? I mean, that was like that was awesome. amazing. I mean, I was like completely like riveting, like tear jerking scenes. You know, it's just uh yeah, it was it was yep exactly it was entertaining. 
not just entertaining, but it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously the movie is like, that's funny. You said tear jerking scenes. Cause Whitney actually started tearing up at, Oh, a, at I, 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 parts, I mean, I, yeah. you know, I, I may be a munchy boy, but I'm just a, 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 a munchy softy at, at heart. You're Tony. a human I mean, being. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, it's like, that's, that's a ridiculously emotional scene. Like this weird little, yeah. Wilson that I'm making out of a, a mountain. But we won't bottle. say we won't say what anything is because people are going to watch it. And, yeah, you, know, you got to watch it for yourself. You know, they're like, going to tear up. You know, and you don't like I said, you don't have to be like the biggest fan of the original. You just have to be somebody that like, oh yeah, that movie. I I, I like that movie. Yeah, that was funny. All those those yeah those characters. You know, it's because uh, it's it's a total nostalgic joyride. I think. Okay, I'm not looking at my Facebook, like I'm not scrolling, but it's up on the screen. And I, I was on memories before we started talking on the episode, but I oh. just looked up and this is a very, this is kind of a coincidence. Okay. So James Earl Jones, which, which who we were just talking about, obviously did the voice of Dar- Darth Vader, which everybody know, knows. Mm-hmm. But I just looked on my screen and my update from 2016 said, I know a lot about Star Wars, but sometimes when I meet someone that's a huge fan, I'll casually just say Dark Vader to piss them off. Oh, (laughs) jeez. If you really want to piss them off, call him like Dark Vapor or something, you know, it's like, (laughs) oh, yeah, that Dark Vapor guy is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. It is funny when people say Dark Vader. Although there were a couple of hilarious end jokes, like I mentioned the... uh, Duke and Duke one from uh, Trading Places, but also at one point you hear like James Earl Jones's voice on the, you know, like like this is ZNN. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Ah, uh, ZNN. Uh, isn't that awesome? But anyway, speaking of munching, uh, should we should we uh, start? Should we get into the munch section of this talk? Oh, you mean the reason why we even do this thing? Yeah. Oh, wait, I guess we did talk about those steaks. Oh, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Well, I believe I mentioned that this uh, episode would be off the rails. This episode is off the rails. And the reason it's off the rails is because where did we go? Because we went in the inner rails. We went to the inner rail, the food hall located in Exarbin. In Omaha, Ex- Nebraska. Zarbin. If you didn't realize where we were. We the are inner in, rail is semi-new. And by semi-new, I want to say, what, a year or two old or something like that? Yeah, that seems about right. And the reason we kind of picked that one is that, so I messaged Aaron and I was saying, and I said, what if we just did inner rail? And the reason I chose that was because we had talked about maybe doing a bang bang episode. And if oh, you know, bang, if you know, bang, you know. Yes. If you know what it is, you know what it is. But if you don't know what it is, it means you have two meals back to back. And uh, so we were kind of hellish. Actually, we took it a step further and we were super hellish. But then, like, listen to this. What did we do, Aaron? We didn't do a bang, bang. What did we do? We did a bang, bang, Bang! Triple Three. bang! Three X Three. bang! Three places. And the reason that we thought that would be good is we were like, well, what if we go to a food hall where we can go from place to place and order? And let me tell you what, we were hellish. We were hellacious because at one point after we ordered our food, me and Aaron both had three beacons. <laughs> three, vibra- <laughs> three vibrating beacons in yes. our pockets. And you'll see the pictures of them when we post our pictures. It was insane. Literally insane. We had to organize our beacons because some places had their name on it and some didn't. So I like, yeah, I put, I was like, my left pocket is Maharani. My back pocket is the sushi place, Nori. And the other one is Kathmandu Momo Station. (laughs) Ha ha. I just said where I went. I revealed it. You, you did. Yeah. So like, I believe we both went to the, uh, we both kind of walked around and kind of got a feel for what we want first. And then we both went and got our uh, sushi roll first or ordered for the sushi roll. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, I got the, uh, the lava roll. Oh my what? gosh. And I got the, damn it. Okay, nori sushi Omaha. It was uh, it was uh, shrimp tempura. Uh, okay, I, I'm pulling it up. Don't worry, I'm pulling up the menu right now. 
Shrimp okay. tempura. There was avocado on the outside. Oh, here it is. The tiger roll. Shrimp ah. tempura, crab, cucumber, avocado, and eel sauce. Eleven ninety nine. Eel sauce? Yum. Yep. So that's I got the tiger roll there, and that is eleven ninety nine. And I got so, the lo- and I got the lava roll there, which is salmon, tuna, avocado, cucumber, crab, spicy mayo, tobiko, and are you going to the mall later? Nice. That was a Billy Madison thing. Oh. <laughs> I just go nice. I was, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that was our one number one. Okay, so first place. That let we're just listing in order with what we ordered. So that I we got sushi, sushi roll there. I got Maharani Indian cuisine, right? Maharani, am I right? Oh yes. I we I I, I, I think out of like out of the th- the two or three times that I've been to Interrail before, I got Maharani every single time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's lovely. I recently got the uh, combo. So this time since it was one of many things I was getting, I got the, uh, I'm oh the uh, the Molly Kofta, homemade cheese and vegetables blended and cooked in cream sauce served with basmati rice. I love how they try to make it almost healthy. Homemade cheese and vegetables. No, what it is is it's like a cheese potato like fried ball, like a like a little meatball. <laughs> but it wasn't a meatball. It was a ve- it was a cheese and veggie. It was ball, a, a but- non meatball. <laughs> And it came with four balls on a big creamy curry like sauce on a plate mm. with a whole side of basmati rice on the side. So that would have been enough for a meal, folks. My Indian alone was like a normal meal, but I had the uh, the um, the sushi roll, and then one more thing, which I will not say until after Aaron talks about his other well, situation. So. Since Maharani is uh, you know my favorite thing there. Um... I had to go for the non-vegetarian platter, which is tons of meat dishes. And, like, that's something that's not just a meal. That's like a meal and a half. That's like a meal that on its own would completely ruin your day. Or Absolutely. You, you would have to nap, at least. But that was the second thing that I ordered. And then when I finished ordering, I looked around and I couldn't find Tony. And he was all the way down at the other end of the inner rail. And what did you get, Tony? Oh my gosh. So my third and last item was the Katmandu Momo Station. And I got the vegan small Momos. Momos? And what the heck's a it Momo? Was, it was steamed. It was regional. You know, here's here's what I'll say. It's regional to Nepal. These dumplings are individually hand wrapped and served with one of our homemade sauces available in steamed or fried. I got the steamed vegan momos these are little dumplings and i got the habanero spicy sauce Ooh, yum and i didn't know what to expect and i still kind of know what i don't know what i had because it's the vegan and even aaron was like well what what is the vegan like what's on it and to this day i still don't know all i know it was like it was like green dumplings the wrap was green so that must have been made out of something green and then and on the inside was vegetables. <laughs> Tony, Tony, let me have one. And uh, I had, you know, had no idea what it was, but it was, the flavors were great. I was like, mm-hmm. wow. And like that, the, the, like I want a spicy chili sauce with it. Yeah, the habanero. Oh, man, that was good. So then while you were ordering that, I went to the Sofra Crepery. That's a weird name. Um, Sofra. It, Sofra. And I got the cheese curds. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the cheese curds. Yes. And I will say I had those two the day before, and then Aaron gave me one of the curds. Yes. Honestly, I, I gave him a curd. He gave me a uh, whatever the, the a Momo. A Momo. I feel like I got the better end of the deal there, you know, but. Uh, but, hey, the curd was worth it. Because we were talking to... about the mac and cheese. They had like mac and cheese plates, but they were like $10. And I was like, $10 for mac and cheese, Tony. For ten dollars, you can make enough mac and cheese to like last you like two or three days. I know, and then I was like, "Well, my sister got that the other day, and she thought it was pretty good." But still, like the price yeah. thing is like, what the hell? I'm like, sure it's pretty good, but you know what I did yesterday, Tony? What? Yesterday, I actually uh, went to Baker's and I got all the supplies to make my mac and cheese. And Ooh. after getting like the actual elbow pasta 
you know, getting uh, cheddar cheese, mozzarella, and Parmesan cheese, and oh uh, a chicken stock, and then, uh, you know, some chicken to put on. All that stuff together, still way under $10. Yeah, and exactly. I ate, like, I ate like, that was like all you I ate, ate like a king. I've already had a little bit for lunch, and I'm going to have, uh, you know, more after we're done with this like that, and I'll probably still nice. have some leftover for tomorrow. Nice. You know, so like $10 Cooking. for, I don't know, whatever. Here's Obviously, the thing. Oh, anyway, go ahead. Obviously, I mean, I, obviously, we didn't go to the uh, inner rail and dine at three places to save money, but I'm just oh, saying, you know. speaking of that, are you ready? <laughs> so after those three places, Aaron, I didn't tell you this. So you know how I had to hurry up and go, move my car to the back and like for whatever reason. And then after that, I was like, well, I can still run back and get those croissants you wanted. So because I, I was in the mood to ride on my bike. So I, I literally went back. I zoomed on my little bike down back to inner rail, went in, got the croissants. I looked at my bank for all the different places I went. I spent fifty dollars. Wow. I'm, I'm adding mine up now, I guess. So, so after. Yep. After my meals, I'll explain while you add up your totals. So. I had my, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, just to give another rundown, after I got my tiger roll, there was $11.99 plus a $2 tip. And also when I paid, it was a pain in the ass. Cause like, yeah, the, the girl that was ringing me up, I swear it was her fault, not mine. But anyway, then the Momo station, the small order of vegan Momos was $8. Plus I think I did a one or $2 tip. And then Maharani, the Molly Copter was freaking $13.99. By the way, why did I get that, Aaron? $13.99, that's like the same price. That's like $1 cheaper than that combo meal. Oh yeah, you could have got the full combo. I'm an idiot. Okay, I have food regret now. I should have got that combo again. Uh, would you say you're Even food though I mad? had that the other day. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I wanted something different because like, uh, I already got that combo. But if I would have realized the price was almost the same. And then the, uh, yeah, so that's, so after that, and then after getting two plain croissants and one chocolate croissant, I spent $50. And somebody looked over and said, Wait, are you nuts? Are you nuts? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I didn't add everything up, but I, I'm, I believe I'm at thirty five or forty dollars, and I didn't get any croissants. Oh my gosh! Yeah, because I know you were at fifteen at the Indian place at least for that. Oh combo. yeah! Oh, absolutely! And yeah. then yeah, your yours would have been the the. I'm sure your what roll did you get again? The lava. The lava. Ele- Eleven ninety nine for the lava. Lava. Then, yep. And then here's the thing, people. I'm kind of an over tipper, which I usually regret later because I'm like, why did I do two dollars on a sushi roll that was already prepped? Oh wait, no, maybe they had to make it. I don't know. Like whatever. I guess I don't regret it. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I go a little bit too crazy. Yeah. He goes too crazy. Like my new. Uh, my new eyebrows made from oh, a, a cut up what Mountain are, Dew bottle. What are those uh. little green things for? What'd you What'd you make those for? Was it a little <laughs> character? You're like, no, no. I, I'm just, that's just my little thing. I'm just trying out my new wire cutters. I'm just cutting these little. Uh... <laughs> I love that you just for fun cut that up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Inner Rail is a lovely place. Here's the thing, folks, since it's still COVID, they have a huge outdoor spray, splay of uh, chairs and tables, and it's totally safe out there. You can go get away from people and just eat your munch and just like, yeah, enjoy the sun. However, I will nice say day. this. Since we're getting away from the, the era of shopping malls and food courts, the idea of having all these food courts, to me, just seems freaking stupid. <laughs> Especially during a global pandemic, having yeah. to go into a shared common area. They were closed for a while, so I'll, I'll give them that. Yeah, I mean, granted, it's it's open. They keep like the thing open, and there's like sanitizer stations, and they've... You know, like there's no longer like the water cup sitting out. So you have to like get the water cups from your thing. But still, if your idea is to like completely reduce like community spread of an infectious disease, don't have open food courts where everybody has to like go in and stand around in the in an area for their food and then handle it. You know, the little key fobs and stuff for your for your order. I'm just saying, I mean, obviously we we went and, you know, we were as uh, safe as as one can be in those circumstances and. You know, mm-hmm. I it's, swear it's one of those things where they were just like, okay, we literally have to reopen. Otherwise, everybody's just going to close down. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's, it's so crazy now. It's like, I blame the government. Anyway, I blame the UFOs. They're in it. <laughs> They're in it with the government. They got to. Yeah. <laughs> They're in it. They're in it with the government. Oh, you'll uh, see. 
You'll all see. Zip straight to the top. Whoa, I, zip! What? What's going on? I forgot that was that character you played on the on the commercial for the buses. Remember, you go zip straight to the top, or what was it? Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's like you think the government doesn't know about this? Of course they know about this. They're, they're in, in on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Then there's like the this thing goes up way up. It's funny because now we actually see those orbit buses around and it's like, hey. Yeah. And you're like, I remember doing this commercial see? before they were even there. My conspiracy theories have proven to be correct. They there are off. giant orange buses around. They're traveling people back and forth. You know, they're taking Linda Hughes and they're transporting her to <laughs> a, a whole other place far away. Linda. Linda. Listen, yeah, Linda. Linda's, what did Linda's character say again? Yeah, I was like, oh, I... You know, they, they took me, they care, took me away, and I was suddenly someplace else, someplace far away. <laughs> Dear God. Ah, uh, I love yeah, Linda. Yeah, this is crazy. Can you believe we've done one, a little over a year, 36 episodes? This might be our last episode ever. We don't know if we want to keep going. Yeah, I mean, the world could end tomorrow, and like... At some point in time, like aliens, uh, the same aliens that led to our end of our world, you know, the conspiracy aliens, they're going to yeah. like, it's like this was one of the last transmissions from the human race of Earth. Let's see what they talked about. Huh. They're talking about making steak and mac and cheese and going to an inner rail. What a weird, strange civilization. <laughs> what is this inner rail? I don't know what that accent was. Yes. But... And then, <laughs> then they'll bring us back in like hologram form. Here's the thing. We don't know if we want to, maybe we won't even do, maybe this will be the last episode ever. What if, you know, what if, like, what if, what if we want to go back to just munching as like, just for fun, you know, like munching for fun. What's the fun of that, Tony? <laughs> what if, what if we realize that like, you know, we should be getting like, for the work that we do, we should be getting like 50000 a year at least. And if we're not getting that, I mean... Or at least $5 a year. I mean, here's the thing. I'm literally paying $15 a month just to pay for the the web, like the podcast distributor thing. So And you're you paying know. $50 just to go eat at Inner Rail. One meal! <laughs> I, just I mean, granted, that was a heck of a meal, though. It was a bang, 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 Tony! Bang, and nobody's bang, done bang, that. Bam, nobody. Bam, bam. I don't think anybody has ever done that. Yeah, we have listeners that are like... Uh, actually, I kind of went to McDonald's and Burger King, then uh, uh, Long John. Ooh, but I want fast food. You know what we we said we we talked about what we got. Yeah, we didn't talk about the full experience. So yeah. the last the last thing I got was the the cheese curds from the the crepery or whatever. And so then Tony and I we had our three you know little key fob things you know for the little buzzer beeper things and uh yeah one for each thing uh two of them like that on two of mine were almost completely identical and i was like well which one's which you know yeah and uh so we got water we went and sat outside and this it was a beautiful day for it yeah it was perfect and, not too uh, windy it was warm tony drove down there in his electronic moped bike the the one that was electric the one that takes batteries and not fuel I drove down there in my gasoline fuel minivan, the Ruby Slipper, and uh, anyway, so <laughs> we're waiting for our things to come up. It's like, all right, well, we both ordered the sushi first, so hopefully our sushi rolls show up. Then suddenly mine goes off first, and I go up and I get the uh, the cheese curds, right? Uh -huh. And then yours goes off, and you go up and you get the momos. Yeah, that was my first thing. And then, if I'm not the mistaken, mine comes up, and I get my sushi. Now, uh -huh. I ordered my sushi after your sushi roll. Yeah, so I was like, where the hell's my sushi? <laughs> so I got mine, and I went up there, and I was like, hey, uh, do you guys have Tony's sushi? I didn't do that. But, uh, <laughs> and they're like, Tony? Who's Tony? Yeah, it's like, oh, you don't know Tony? You don't know the Munchie Boys then, do you? <laughs> so then then you got your Indian, I believe, next. Yeah, my Indian then, was last. Then you got your sushi. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know, 15 minutes later, I finally get my Indian. I keep standing up. You know, I'm over, you know, 
because we like in our minds we'd get all the food at the same time and take pictures of the full smorgasbord. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the rea- we wanted the full shebang all in one photo, but we couldn't do that because nobody got done with the meals in a timely fashion. And we decided, you know, there's really no reason to like let cheese curds and momos sit out while we wait for other things. So yeah. Also, if we're gonna if we're gonna literally like eat three meals with a food. <laughs> we got to kind of, you know, do it in, in, in waves and not all at once. So, yeah, we were like, maybe this could be kind of an appetizer situation. And I'll say, I, I honestly had, uh, had very little to nothing to eat the day before. So it was actually kind of hit the spot to have that. And like, but even after like the cheese curds, you know, you eat like a giant thing of cheese curds and you're like, man, I'm getting kind of full. That's kind of curbing my appetite. So yeah, then, then after, you know, you know, the uh, sushi, it's like, oh, man, I haven't had sushi since, like, before the pandemic, not counting maybe, like, Baker's sushi once or twice. Yeah. So and it then, kinda, yeah. when I got the freaking, you know, Indian. meat platter, from, you know, it was like, oh, my gosh, this is like. Indian combo platter. Literally a meal and a half. And I was like, at that point, you know, Tony was almost finishing up and he had to go move his bike. And I was like, no, oh, I got to finish this. And he's like, well, you might have to take some leftovers. And I was like, You're well, like, maybe. No, I'm a maybe, munchie but boy. The whole point of this is to be gluttonous. The whole point of this yeah. is to eat this all. Yeah, and I did. Exactly. It almost killed me. It ruined the rest of the day. The only like, thing he left on that Indian platter was the raita. And you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to go up and I'm going to look up raita so that I can explain what it is. Whatever it is, I didn't want it. I, uh. <laughs> Took one taste of that. It was like, yeah, you know, I don't need this. It's a savory yogurt snack. You can use it as a marinade for chicken. You can serve it as a side or topping to any hearty dish if it needs a light accompaniment. So it's it's basically used as like a light yogurt sauce. Like if you have Indian and it's way too spicy. And See, then you're supposed to be able to dip like your naan into it as kind of a cooling agent. But here's the thing that gets me to my next point. Maharani does is not spicy. I think it's catered to like literally Americans that just love like simple, non-spicy sweet. But I was we were talking about this because I don't know that for a fact. That might just be the way they make theirs. I don't know. Yeah, and India is a huge country with a billion people. I mean, there could be different ideas of like, oh, this is our style. This is a, you know, we're from yeah. you know like where we need and- we we use more sugar and less like whatever. Like, I don't know. But it's very creamy, very sweet. Uh, well, whatever, whatever it is, it tasted more yeah. like a weird, sour, creamy stuff to me, and I, I didn't like it. Yeah, so that was the only thing you didn't eat on the, on that combo. But that was like the rest of the day was like, oh, so full. I, I definitely took a, an interrail nap after that. Like, like later on, I completely crashed, and I was just <laughs> like, I had my food nap. And I was like, dear God, what have I done? And then my in my bank, it said $50. And I was like, I am hell. Man, it's like, I got to where am I going to find $50 to cover this this uh, delicious bill right now? And I'm not joking. This might have just been me being self-conscious. But like our 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 little fobs, our little beacons kept vibrating and beeping. And we kept going back in from the outside and back and forth and back and forth. And I swear I saw a couple tables look at me like, dear God, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like I thought you got your meal. It's like judge not other tables. Lest you be judged. It did yeah. suck, though, having to wait around for my Indian as much as I did. Because I kept yeah. going back. I kept going in there and it's like, well, maybe. Oh, maybe. he got food mad, everybody. I That's didn't get food was... mad. But, you know, I was like, <laughs> you know, I, I had plenty of food to keep me occupied. But it was like, you know, or is it going to come out? You know, and then like, yeah. you know, when it finally did, it was great. But then like, you know. You were almost done, and you were all getting antsy about having to like run and grab like uh, move my car real quick, and then yeah. yeah, like, and I was like, dang it, I don't want to do that. Oh, okay, so I'll tell this story really quick. So Whitney called me and was like, oh, like, uh, and I was like, yeah, I took my moped. Remember, I took the electric bike, and then uh, she was like, oh, well, the two ladies are coming over to eat outside. And I was like, oh, they're coming separate. So like, it would be ideal to have the two spots in the driveway for them. But then my car was in the driveway and I was like, well, I mean, like we're getting we're wrapping up kind of so I could hurry up and go over and like move my car. So here's the thing, Aaron, I, I, I was able to get over there and move my car right away. 
and they nobody had gotten here yet and it was perfect timing because the lady got here right after that but then listen to this the other lady literally didn't even come until like oh. later so i would have been completely fine like just like i was like dang it were you like I other lady are you nuts yeah <laughs> but uh it was one of those things where i was like dang it i could have just stayed and we could have done our like our lazy like uh our lazy like finishing and goodbye where we're just like oh man that was good and then we're just like talking about nothing for like 20 minutes and just like kind of lazily just like loitering around and yeah if you ever uh play the creature from the black lagoon pinball machine there's a uh mode in there called move your car you know like the whole theme is kind of like drive-in movie themed and like there's a scene where somebody's car is parked in front of you and you can't see the theater and you're like move (laughs) your car and you have to keep you know going hitting this particular loop and every time you do it you know it's like another point like move uh, move your car and like they eventually like shoot at the car and then they blow the car up and then eventually it just like drives off yeah that's nuts I've played it. I've played it and I don't even remember. Maybe I didn't get that far. Maybe you didn't. But yeah. Maybe you didn't. But anyway, we did a special little thing for this episode, which was we asked people to send us some recordings of them either having uh, a Munchie Boys memory or a Munchie story of their own or just like some type of salutation or just whatever. About like that we because it was our one year special. We've been doing Munchie Boys one year. We don't know if we're coming back. This could be the last episode ever, but that's just a little tease. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if if you want more Munchie Boys, you got to tell us because uh, yeah, we're uh, we're we 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 need an affiliate to pick us up, and we need them to give us that money that we we've earned. You know, we need fifty thousand each per year. I mean. Because me and Aaron both said that we might potentially just move to the Hollywood Hills to continue Munchie Boys, and uh, but first we need the start the the seed funds from the affiliate. And then if we if we move to the Hollywood Hills, we're both going to kick jobs as uh, Captain Jack Sparrow impersonators. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so we can get to those recordings. Uh, this has been an awesome year of of munching. Here's the thing. We're going to keep munching because that's just in our spirit and our soul and our personality. Is it? It's part of who we are and what we do. Yeah. And, and uh, like, like literally even like it could be tomorrow and I might just be like, should we get Ethy? Oh, Ethy. We got to do Ethy. Because I don't have to edit with Scott until after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my- not good editing food because then it'll build up gas and then you're just like, ooh. I don't do my editing till after lunch. Yeah, I don't. Well, sometimes I do. What am I talking about? Sometimes Scott, you do. It's funny. I actually got excited because Scott was like, oh, could we actually start like after lunchtime? Because I have this appointment at 1030. And I was like, sweet. It's like after lunch. That works for me. And I was like, oh, would you actually mind if we did after I nap? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> it's like if we're going to do it after lunch, I got to do it after my after lunch nap. After, after. <laughs> OK, so we're going to play our messages that people sent. We kind of wish that we could have responded to them live, but we I couldn't figure out how like we could the best way to do that technically. So we'll just compile all the files and then play them. But uh, should we still do like some type of synthesizer like after that, or do you want to do like a a quiet bed of synthesizer under the messages? I don't know. Like what? Well, do you... let's just do the messages and then we'll do our vintage synthesizer. Oh yeah, that's true. Because then people can focus. We'll focus on the messages. Yeah. And then we'll do this. And what do you what do you think in this this uh, this for this last episode of the season? Well, do you remember the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, Tony? Oh yeah. Now, for those who don't know, the Nintendo Entertainment System was uh, basically the U.S. version of the Famicom family computer that was uh, released in 1983. Whoa. In Japan. The but year I was born. Was released over here in the U.S. in 85. Yeah. And oh my gosh, did it change things. You know, there was a the huge video game crash of 83 where companies like Atari went from being like worth like billions of dollars to being to having virtually nothing. And uh, 
So people didn't like video games. They didn't think video games would sell. So like Nintendo was like, oh, well, we'll include a robot and make it into a learning family computer. And then we'll, that's how we'll get in like a shelf space. And then like, once it started selling, it's like, all right, well, we don't need the robot thing anymore. We'll just cut that off. But anyways, it had yeah. a very unique, it didn't have a sound chip. You know, like Commodore C64 had the SID chip. Atari had its Pokey and television had the AY3 chip. These are all very unique sound chips and, and, and things. But what the Nintendo did have was a, was a five channels of microprocessor sound. And, uh, you know, you had like the triangle wave and the square, two square wave channels, a noise channel and a PCM sample channel. Whoa. So when you're playing games like Ghostbusters, that's the PCM sample channel doing its Ghostbusters. Whoa. When, you're, when you're playing Legend of Zelda, that's the triangle channel doing the and usually they use like the the uh, the square wave channels for the uh, bass lines, and then the noise channels are usually used for the the drums and stuff. And there's some Whoa. excellent. That's sweet. Excellent game music from from the Nintendo. There's like the, of course, we all know and love Super Mario Brothers. Blaster Masters theme music. That's one of my favorites on there. The Golgo 13 music. Anyways, I've got a uh, MIDI cartridge for the Nintendo Entertainment System so I can actually play it with a, with a keyboard or I can oh sequence it gosh. out. Oh, my gosh. And for our, our big, big one-year anniversary blowout, all 8-bit Nintendo. Whoa. And here's yes. the thing, Aaron, can you do like, can you do like a, a full Munchie Boys? Like, you know, can you do all those different channels, like the baseline, the noise channel? And then can you do like, and then can you do samples about like Munchie Boys in there? Like, can you somehow? Well, it, it doesn't sample. It's, you know, we would, oh, would, dang it. we would need to like record the samples and then cut them down to 8-bit assembly code and then throw it into the thing. That's oh, not going to happen. Man. Okay. After these messages will be right back. Hi, Munchie Boys. My name is Emily. I'm a big fan. I would, in fact, call myself a Munchie Boys super fan. And I have to say that one of my favorite Munchie memories was um, listening to the episode where you did La Casa Herrache. And the reason why that one was interesting is because that's right in my own neighborhood. I live off about 52nd and Q. Um, that restaurant is on like 49th and Q and I didn't even know it existed. So thank you Munchie Boys for helping me learn about all of the local places in my own community and even the ones right in my neighborhood. M -m -m Munchie, Munchie Boys. It's your old pal Micah from way back on episode 16, the unsung heroes of summer. Just wanted to congratulate you on one year, one year of keeping us entertained one year of keeping us company. Thank you. It's been a blast. I've been eating right along. There's a few spots I have bookmarked for the end of COVID. I can't wait for that. So thank you again. But I'm calling you out. I feel like you guys were a little, little bit unfair to the place that shall not be named. Now, don't get me wrong. I love it. Love it when you guys get food mad, but you were a little unfair. I went, I thought it was pretty dece, and I think they deserve another shot. So, you might just have to do a little, uh, a little revisit, a little uh, mini-sode, a little mini munchie sode and feel free, maybe I'll tag along, extend the invite, I'll be there, but until then, keep doing what you do, I'll keep listening, and long live the King Bite! Also, bring back videos. Every season needs at least one. Hello, my favorite Munchie Boy moment was probably when Aaron was doing the Max Headroom background and kept kind of like disappearing into the matrix of the background. Um, that was one of my favorite parts. Uh, my second favorite part was all of the Mountain Dew sponsorships that Aaron did. Um, I would love to see a super cut of that. Wow. Isn't that great? We've got a lot of, a lot of fans and, uh, they, they, uh, that's not, that sucks. What, what, what's a good, <laughs> 
what's a good thing to say about the uh, about the, the messages? Like, uh, I don't know, just like it's nice to have those uh, consistent listeners or something. All right, we well, can just bullshit. It's like, wow. Well, thanks to our listeners for those messages, and uh, yeah, may- maybe there'll be many more seasons of Munchy Boys, or maybe. The world will end tomorrow, and maybe aliens we'll will move on to another an creative endeavor. We can't be controlled, but what the world does know is that we're Munchy Boys, and what they do know is that we will continue munching, regardless of what the what the situation is. And uh, and uh, speaking of creative endeavor, let me just pull out my eight bit Nintendo Entertainment System right now and play this for you. Here we go. What do you think of that, Tony? How did you put that together? I put it together with the retro awesome sound of Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Absolutely. You might be thinking Sega does what Nintendo don't, but let's hear (laughs) Sega do that. Is that a Sega instinct? Instinct. Oh, <laughs> instinct, I meant. I said instinct. Although Sega does have a pretty sweet 16 bit uh, uh, FM synthesizer with chips from Yamaha, which uh, is, we'll have to do that in the future, maybe. But anyway, we would like to thank everybody for listening for the year and munching along with us. Actually, that's funny because I, I know that some li- listeners have munched along with us. Yeah. Like people have been saying, like, oh, we went there. Like we we heard about that and we thought it would be good to go try it. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, and hopefully we continue to inspire you and your your is you've got choices. You've got options for munching in the in the in the city of Omiha. Yeah. And now you got to find other podcasts to uh, listen to about munching until we get back to it. If we do, see, we always leave it as a little question. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Well, I guess. uh, As as Truman once said, good morning. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon. Good evening. And good night.